What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to get everything buttoned up on the four-seater and finally take her for a rip snot. So we got those pedals all mounted up. Everything's fully welded. Well, actually, I forgot to weld the mount for the pedal all the way, but it's tacked in a few places, so should be good and strong. Uh, we had to run a temporary wiring harness on this engine. What I did was got an ATV wiring harness because you can't find a go-kart wiring harness for these 150s. I don't know why. There's a ton of 150 go-karts. I don't know. You know, I don't understand why you can't buy a wiring harness for it. Unless there's some Chinese website that I don't know about. But I got gas uh, lines ran to the tank and everything and to the petcock. The only thing I need to do is throw an air box on this uh, carburetor. And uh, the carburetor was new when we got this uh, 
the go-kart that this engine was on so it should be fine i have it rigged quite a bit because this wiring harness like i said was not for this engine but it works fine everything turns over so i'm going to show you the cobbled up mess look at that mess it's all zip tied up all nice and neat not really but the battery's just sitting right there i'm going to zip tie it so it won't fall off i'm not going to ride this thing like crazy i just want to make sure the steering geometry is right you know and everything's good there is still more welding to do on the front end i have to weld the bars that's running under the mounts for the steering rack the bar right there isn't welded to the floor or it's just tacked in place so that needs to fully welded and i need to pull the go-kart up in the air so i can get to the bottom of that to weld some gussets on those ears that mount the uh, lower a arm as i said that little piece of metal there under the pedal i'll zoom you in that is not welded that's just tacked but it should be fine to uh, test everything out someone noticed in the last video that the steering wheel was kind of wobbling around because of the pillow block i never knew that these pillow blocks would rotate in their housing i thought they were solid mounted but if you put enough pressure on them they'll actually start spinning and rotating so what i did was this is kind of a useless grease alamite here i mean it is in my opinion so i took it out and put a set nut in it off of a axle collar so now the steering wheel does not move up and down and it's all good to go that's a rigged up mess that's for sure
Okay, so she fired up, uh, took a minute for fuel to get down into the bowl, which is normal. Back tires keep on deflating on me. I think it's the rims bent or something. So we are gonna put some new rims on the back because we already have new ones on the front. So time to get air put in the tires and uh, we'll take this thing out for its first ride. Okay, so this thing is ready to ride. I'm gonna have to stick my foot on the brake because it wants to take off a little bit. It might be out a little bit too high. But uh, let's see if the brakes work. Oh yeah, they work. See if this uh, works. All right. I don't know why. I just didn't start it like this. She does not want to take off, that's for sure. We might throw a new carb on it. The car was new when we got this go-kart, but of course it's been rained on and whatnot, so. Okay, so on these 150 carbs, they're vacuum controlled, which means they have a diaphragm inside and the vacuum actually even controls the pet cock on the fuel tank. So, uh, what you're gonna wanna do with this T that's on these carburetors is uh, one side of the T goes to the little vacuum nipple on the head, right beside the intake uh, neck then this other side will go up to your pet cock. Now this will be what controls opening the pet cock. When the motor starts turning over, it'll open the pet cock, let fuel flow down to the bowl of the carburetor. This is just an overflow, and this is another, I think this is part of the choke as well, like electronic choke, or it might even be uh, the idle sensor on it. Uh, not too sure, but now we're gonna switch this out because it would idle, uh, but every time you'd rev it, it would die. So, And that's actually, probably half our problem right there we probably didn't even need this carburetor that's collapsed down it looks like it's been almost melted shut that was probably our original problem so i'm actually going to use some of this new line that came with it uh it came with this t on it and i just swapped it over for the stuff that was left over from the old go-kart so now we can run this up to the pet cock this to the head and bolt this thing back on and should be ready to ride but the fuel line goes right there you can see that it's kind of hard to shoot uh, video on this frame. Everything's kind of tucked, tucked in there quite well. So I got the new carburetor all installed. I'm hoping that vacuum line was the problem. Maybe it wouldn't open up the carb as well as it should have been. So uh, we're gonna try it now. That was the problem. And I actually could ride this, like, it's not the most, like, honestly, this is like a little red version one. Okay. Yeah, the, the idle probably needs set. thing okay auto shut off auto start and stop like a new car one thing i definitely notice is it's got like the front end alignment is not right i i bought alignment but like when you turn it it seems like they they camber a lot i can't remember which way but this motor is going to have plenty of power that was like me very easily gassing on it this is the performance jetted carb uh but we're going to do the exhaust the performance cdi the open air filter so that's gonna open up a lot of power, but it has plenty of power for now. So I'm gonna do another little cruise around and just see how everything works. You know, there are some stuff tacked still that I really need to get fully welded. But um, this is just a test drive, then we can disassemble it and, you know, fully weld everything, make sure we didn't, most of it's already fully welded. These aren't, I like these handles though, it added a lot of look to it. What do you think, Miss Redbeard? No, I like it. I think it looks awesome, it's gonna be pretty cool. And of course, like I said, this carb is brand new and I think they have a little bit of self-adjusting to them, but I'll take it another rips knot and we'll see. We'll set it in the back, see if you can squeeze back there. 
So we're gonna start doing uh, Uber Uber deliveries <laughs> on the four seater. This red beard is actually in the back of this thing. I'm in the front, legs all sprawled out like a cowboy. We're gonna ride this thing. So you wanna kick on that uh that hit oh, that yeah, switch. Yeah. You see when I steer it how bad that one's like cocked over. You know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. See how it wants to just push that front? There we go. I mean, it's got plenty of power. Something up with this side. It seems to be the problem. So we'll check these problems out and see what's up. So one thing I'm gonna have to do uh, is I'm gonna have to put those gussets on these just to keep make sure nothing bends. Uh, and then I mean it this was just a test ride you could see it had plenty of power this is my modeling stance mm -hmm. you can see the four-seater redbeard's garage go-kart has plenty of power for all your performance needs there are a few things it's going to need adjustments i mean nothing is really on this front end is really torqued down i mean we shouldn't be riding it no more than what i just did you got to finally see it go that's the important part it's alive but yeah it's a pretty exciting day I'm trying to and one thing too is I probably need to tighten up the spindles because I don't know how tight we put the bottom bolts, to be honest. Maybe I can show you when it's, what's it like this? It looks like this one's turning more than the other. It, I could be wrong, it's hard to tell, but it's got plenty of turning, I think. I mean, you definitely wouldn't want to get this bad boy in a tight situation, but the good thing about it is uh, it has reverse. You keep forgetting about that. So that'll help out with the you know, these 150 cc's don't have a lot of steering to them. I might take it for one more spin around the, the yard and let my son sit in the back seat. Not gonna go fast, of course, because I don't wanna, don't wanna break anything that isn't, you know, I'm pretty sure most of the stuff is fully welded. There's just a few little things. So uh, me and Grayson's gonna go for a hop skit. He looks like a homeless child right now, but. <laughs> half yeah. pajamas, half play clothes. Yeah. yeah, it's just house time today. Hanging out at the house, you know, living life. And going swimming. Oh! going swimming dip in the pool let's take this thing for a ride what about it good come in sit right here the seat ain't bolted down but you'll be fine you can hold on to this that's what that's for you see how comfortable grayson sits that's oh, the way yeah. i designed this go-kart oh, yeah. here put both legs right here look at that look at that the butt part is not bolted down but he has i mean are you comfortable and there will be armrest on top of these, some padded armrest. Uh, it's perfect. And then when I make some some yeah, pads for this headrest, he, I mean, it'll be right there behind. I mean, this is built exactly for him in the back seat. So that's awesome. You like it? And I feel like everyone that said the thing was too high, it's like perfect. Yeah, I mean, this is how much room. My daughter sits in here and her head is, is like this. This seat is tiny and it makes the whole go-kart look tall. And the front end is small. I could have made the front end a little bit taller, but I mean, I did this all off the top of my head and I think it turned out pretty darn good for just free balling it. This will be changed out. I may put this seat back there, but it's angled and I didn't design it to be angled. If you notice, Grayson's back is straight up. That's the way I made this back seat. Oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> you off at me? No, she was. Go do the back seat ignition. Check. Check. <laughs> Check. Check. Okay.
She runs under her own weight. Whoa! How was it, Grayson? Good. Good. Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe, I mean, those shocks are probably halfway garbage. This go-kart we took all this stuff off of was thrashed on quite a bit, so that's probably 50% of the stuff. You got to see it ride, be happy with it. There you go. <laughs> this thing is uh, almost complete. We got to do some final, you know, assembly stuff to it and do some final welds and then we can finish the front end, the side panels and get it off to paint once we disassemble the whole freaking thing. This thing's been a long journey, but thank you for tuning in, watching this whole build. Of course, at the end of the whole build, you'll see, uh, you know, start to finish complete build, uh, probably in under 10 minutes or so, super sped up. But yeah, it's uh, been a long, long journey. But make sure to check out all the links in the description below for all the parts we use on the four-seater. They're always down there. And you could hear a rattling on the four-seater. That was just a gas tank being metal on metal. Uh, I am going to put some rubber, you know, in between that so you won't hear that. But, uh, yeah. My shirt's cracking up. Had this bad boy a while. Well, you know what they say. Out with the old, in with the new. We have new merchandise. Yeah. Look at that. It's going to be nice. We've got hats and shirts and stickers at rbgcarts.com. So if you want to support the channel, please do and go buy a shirt, sticker, and a hat, and we would greatly appreciate it. Make sure to go to Go Power Sports and check out uh, all their go-kart parts and use that discount code REDBEARD to save 10% on all your purchases. And uh, I, I used all their parts on this go-kart. Every single piece came from Go Power Sports. So that kind of shows you what you can do with the parts they provide. Uh, whatever your imagination can come up with, you can build it using Go Power Sports parts. And they're helping support your favorite YouTubers so you can get videos like this one. So make sure to help support their company. So in return, we can keep making awesome content. Make sure to go to Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat and give us a like and follow. We put stuff out all the time so you'll stay more up to date and know what's coming out on the channel. And we do have a P.O. Box. That's Redbeard's Garage. P.O. Box 572, Sweetwater, Tennessee, 37874. All these links uh, to all the products we use, our social media, everything's in the description below. Make sure to go to RBG Carts. Support the channel. It would help us out a lot so we can do even bigger and badder builds for you guys. Yeah, let me know what you think of the four-seater. She's pretty sweet. And always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out. Thank you.